Hi everyone, welcome to the Bioinformatics Code channel. In today's video, I'm going to show you how you can install GNU Parallel in a Linux environment. So, GNU Parallel is a tool used for executing jobs in Parallel using one or more computers. And this comes in handy um, in situations such as when you are processing multiple files or several files at a go. Then, using GNU Parallel, these files will be done faster for you because the jobs will be distributed among the CPUs or your computers and doing that allows the job to run quickly for you. Another scenario is let's say we are, you, we, are, we are downloading let's say 10 or 12 files. So by default if you are going to download it's going to be in series. It's going to be serial. But then with the help of GNU Parallel, you can assign each of these downloads to a, a, a CPU or a processor on your computer and then things will run faster for you. So this is uh, how GNU Parallel makes life easy for you when you are performing tasks. So let's go back to the installation. So with GNU Parallel, you can install uh, by downloading the source code and then compiling and then you get your, your, your binaries. Or you can also use Anaconda to do the installation. But for this tutorial, I'll show you how to use the source code. So we will download the source code, compile, and then execute the binaries that we have. So let's proceed. So this is the page where we download the source code. I'll leave this page also in the description box so that you can use that. So on this page, we have several servers here that you can download the source code from but let's use this one https so click on it and then it'll be sent to another page so we have several versions here for para but let's go with this one this very one here let's let's go yeah scroll down to at least one of them the latest ones here so we have one here that's the, the last one here. As at the time of making this tutorial, this was the latest. So that's what we are going to use. So we are going to download the tarball. This very one here. Tar.bz2. But the principle, the procedure works with almost all the other versions. So you can just use any of them. So let's download the latest one here. So with the download, you can choose to click and then just save on your machine. Okay, I'm saving on my desktop. That's one way to download and install it. Or you can also choose to just use a download link and then go and then download from the command line. That is what I'll do. I'll download from the command line. And this comes in handy if you are, let's say, working on a remote server where you don't have access to the GUI or any browser there. So I'll need to get a download link. So I'll right click, go to copy link. And then I have the link copied. So I'll go to the terminal. You should also go to the terminal and then we continue the activity from there. So I'll use widgets to download it. You can also use Kerl or any other command line tool that can download files over the internet so i'll use you get but before that let me just cd to my home directory first yeah it's important we do that and i'll do an ls and then i'll now come and download so i'll see you get and supply it with a link this download link here that we copied on the browser and then i'll execute it here Okay, so it seems there was an error here, uh, but this error, we can still rectify it. It's, it has something to do with certificates. So we can use another feature to bypass that. So you say we get dash dash no check certificates, and then we supply it with a link again. Please know that if the first one here worked fine for you, then you don't need to repeat with the second one here. So you take note of that. So let's run and get the file.
So download is complete. Let's clear the screen first. Let's do an LS. So this is the file here. So this is para latest, but you can also do it in any other version as well. So this is compressed. So we need to extract the content from it. So we use tar. We say tar x the f, and then we specify the name here. Para blah blah blah. Then we extract the contents. So extraction has been done. When you do ls, you find this coming. This directory coming here. This contains the source code, and that is what we are going to use. Now, before we compile, we need to organize the installation that we are about to do. So we need to create a directory where we will install para in it. Here is just the compilation section. So eventually we will not need this for executing para. So let's make a directory here, still in the home directory. Let's call it apps. And then in the apps directory, we will then create another directory called para. So let's say make the apps slash para. We can also add the version number here, but for this tutorial, let's keep it simple. Let's make it this way. Okay, so now we have this done. Okay, now let's get a full part of this para. So let's go in cd apps slash para and then do a pwd to get a full part. I'm doing this step by step so that beginners can easily follow. So please note this path here that, that has been given to you. You will use it during the compilation. So it's likely yours will be different from mine. So you take note of that. So let's go back CB. And this time we are going to CB to this directory here. So I say CB. But please make sure you are in that directory and you see it's here. So you do an ls to check where you are. So I will cd to the directory here. Let's do an ls. Yeah, we have some stuff here, but that's fine. So from here, the first thing we do is to issue the configure command. So we say the slash configure. And then we specify the target, the path where we want the installation to go, now the compiled files to go. So you see dash dash prefix equals, and this is where you specify this path here that you got when you cd to the para directory we created. So mine is slash home slash student two slash apps slash para. There's my prefix. So then we execute it. Okay, so the configure script has completed its work. Let's clear the screen. So now we are going to issue another command called make. So we say make. Okay, so make has been done. We now issue another command called make install. So we say make install. Okay, so that one has also been done for us. So we are ready to go. So installation is complete. Let's clear the screen first. So we are going to move back to our home directory. So I'll do a CD and then I'll do an LS. So everything is here. So let's do an ls apps. We have para. Let's do an ls apps para. So we have it here. So notice we have a bin here. So this is where the binary is. So let's say ls apps slash para slash bin. And we have them here. This is where the para binaries are so we have this here 
okay so let's just issue a command here with the current setup if you want to issue a command for para you have to specify the full path so let's just test the para file so you see apps slash para slash bin slash para okay so that's what we have here okay so that means that the installation was successful the compilation was successful let me put it that way but because we have not specified any arguments that is why we have this coming here but we can still exit from this the point was to test to make sure that para is working and it's 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 working fine so we press ctrl d as has been given here to exit so you say ctrl d and then we exit you can also use ctrl c it also works now let's clear the screen so with the current setup we have whenever we want to call para we have to give the full path and this might be problematic for us so what we need to do is to set up our system such that once we issue para like this let me just do it here once we issue para like this we should have para running for us okay so because we've not configured it to that um, that's 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 we we are always going to have this issue okay but then with the current setup we have we have to specify the full path and this becomes problematic if let's say you are in a different directory that means you have to make sure you know where you are and give the full paths and this um, can be made more convenient when we set up so that we just need to run this one word here so that is what we are going to do next so we need to modify the dot bash rc file and then add a path to para to it and so that means that we need to get the full path of where the para executable is let's do an ls first so we are going to cd to this and then the para and then the bin and get the full path and then proceed from there so let's say cd apps slash para slash bin we are in it let's do an ls again we have this so we need a path here so we say pwd so there's a path we need that we are going to set so that's what we are going to do here. so please make sure you also note what is displayed for you here so let's go back so what we are going to do is to modify the .bashrc file so mine is here let's go ahead to just get some few lines to so .bashrc so it contains commands and statements that will be executed anytime you open the terminal okay or, or the bash let me put it that way so we are going to do the editing here and add a path to it so let's first clear the screen and then let's do this let's make a copy a backup of the dot bashrc file so i'll say cp dot bashrc and then i'll give it just bashrc dot back it's just a backup so that in case anything goes wrong we can just reverse and then replace with the backup file now let's edit it you can edit with any text editor i prefer to use nano but you can use vi vim or whatever that's also fine so nano nano dot brush rc i'll edit like this so i'll scroll down I'll scroll down here yeah like this where we have an empty space here and then i'll add the path to power out there so i say export path 
because let me just come back here yeah so mine was slash home slash student to slash apps para okay so i have it here so para and then bin okay so i put again slash home slash students to slash app slash para slash bin this is my path and then you add a colon and you add dollar path because it's possible there might be other parts already set so you want to also add them so that is how we do it to set the path so once we are done with this we now exit it please make sure you have the right path set and follow these instructions okay it's important you do that so you exit using control x if you are using none but the others will have their own way of exiting and saving so i'll save it and then with the current setup we've made the effects that will be will, will be done or will be affected when you open a new terminal so let's open a new terminal and then you continue from there so try and then also open your terminal so there's my terminal okay the new one so here if i issue power like this it's done for us so here no matter what directory you are you just issue this and then it will just run for you so this is how we install power uh, by using the source code so let's clear the screen i use ctrl d to exit let's clear the screen so now power is working so you cannot test with a number of commands that you want which i believe um, you can do it but i'll be making some videos on how to use power um, to speed up your um, linux command so those things will be done in the future so that'll be all for this tutorial and before we go let's do an ls and do a mop up we need to do a cleanup of our files here so we downloaded this and then we extracted the content here and we also made a backup here so these are files that we do not need because now everything is working fine for us so let's remove them you can also choose to leave them but it's fine so i'll remove mine and please know that this rm command here you should be using it carefully because once you use it and you delete some stuff you can never recover those stuff again so be careful past using that it's done now let me remove this one here this is a directory that contains some files so we have to use this and then i remove para now I'll do an ls and now everything is working fine here for you so this is how we do the installation the compilation of para so that'll be all for this tutorial and let me also know uh, your views in the comment section and let's discuss this and in the future videos we look at how to use para to work and it's executes linus commands so thanks for watching and i'll see you in the next session goodbye